This is John Beethan with AlternativeHealthTools.com podcast, and this is episode number 35, titled Classic Homeopathy, subtitled Wake Up to Your Life. This was recorded with Hannah Eagle, who lives and practices homeopathy in New Mexico. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at feedback at AlternativeHealthTools.com or go to the website, AlternativeHealthTools.com, go to the contact page and you can email us from there. Additionally, Hannah and I are going to be scheduling a blab where you can live interact on a video feed with Hannah about two weeks after the release of this particular podcast. If you want to get notified on that, go by alternativehealthtools.com and let us know from the contact page. And additionally, you can sign up on the newsletter and we'll let you know there as well. I think I'd like to share a little bit of why I, how I found it and how I even got there. I was, as you said, a massage therapist. Um, and I became an artist after that and uh, was involved in that for quite a while. Uh, but I had a health issue. I had something, an autoimmune issue called Raynaud's syndrome. Mm. So I went to a homeopath for help with that. Mm -hmm. um, it's where your, your peripheral vessels shut down when you get cold. Your fingers and toes turn white, uh, lose all their circulation, and... The immune system overreacting when you get cold by taking all of your circulation to your core. Hmm. So I went to this homeopath, and not only did I have that cured, but I also uh, got over my fear of public speaking. Oh, really? Which I know is a huge factor for most people. Welcome back, and this is Alternative Health Tools, and um, I'm standing in for Lisa today. Lisa's taken some time off. Today, I'm really, really excited because we have Hannah Eagle, who's um, practicing homeopathy, and she's on the line. Hi, Hannah. Hi, John. Great to be here with you. Yeah, it's really great to have you here. I'm in San Diego, and you're in New Mexico. Yeah, just so everybody knows, we've actually... We haven't talked in, what, 20 years or something, but um, Hannah, uh, yeah. Yeah, Hannah was um, my massage therapist years and years ago and um, sort of lost track, and we've reconnected. And um, she has a, a, a practice that we want to, really want to talk about, and I want to learn about it because I really don't know very much about homeopathy at all. So, you know, why don't you talk a little and bit? And it's my, one of my... Go ahead. No, go ahead. It's one of my favorite subjects to talk about. Yeah. Um, classical homeopathy is my focus. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference between other types of homeopathy is in classical. You basically just use one remedy at a time, mm -hmm. okay. uh, where uh, in others they use combination remedies. Mm -hmm. but we're going to go with it's the most traditional and most... Um, uh, historical way to use homeopathy. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Which is a really, really old medicine. Uh -huh. How old is it, actually? Uh, um, well over 200 years old. Wow. The, the founder uh, was a German physician that discovered this in the late 1700s and practiced into the mid-1800s. Um, mm-hmm. He he actually um, homeopathy extended his life radically. Uh, oh, yeah. He was living at a time when when life expectancy was in your forties, mm -hmm. and he lived to be into his mid eighties. Oh my gosh! In fact, in fact, in his seventies, he married a woman in her twenties, <laughs> and. Uh, nice. <laughs> Who also became a homeopath. Uh huh. Uh, but yeah, he was a very vital, mm -hmm. uh, long lived human being mm -hmm. for his time. 
Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So what is the premise and the, you know, what's the premise of it? And how, how did, is there any history about how he sort of discovered it? Was, a, was there like a light bulb yeah. that went on or was it curiosity or how did it, how did he start? Do you, if you know. Yeah, I do. He, um, the, the premise of it is that, um, actually Paracelsus talked about it, mm-hmm. uh, a Greek philosopher, he said that there are two ways of treating disease. One was with similars and one was, was with opposites. Mm-hmm. And with opposites, that's what conventional medicine is, with, you know, with antibiotics and mm-hmm. antihistamines and anti, um, antibacterials, um, where with homeopathy, we dilute um, a substance to the point um, that it it's extremely diluted and potentized, and it will cure something that it could cause if it were in in a full strength form. Really. Um, so is it a yeah. is it a mirror of the disease or a mirror of the virus or a mirror? Is that but in low yes. doses? Okay. It so is a that. mirror of the disease. Okay. Um, Hanuman, Hanuman was, like I said, a physician mm-hmm. in his time. Uh, he was dissatisfied with medicine of the day. Mm-hmm. And he actually gave up practicing medicine and started translating medical books because he was fluent in about nine languages. Oh, wow. And, um, and he, while he was doing that, he, he, he ran into this story about poisoning of people who lived in South America uh, with the bark of a what they call the China tree. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the symptoms of this poisoning were like malaria. Hmm. So he got the idea of diluting this bark to the point where it was so dilute it wouldn't hurt a person, but he wondered if it would actually cure malaria. Hmm. And it actually was curative for malaria. He started um, experimenting with other substances. Mm -hmm. Um, In fact, um, he experimented with over 100 Hmm. uh, substances during his lifetime. He was part of each experiment. So I think that's part of why he lived such a long life. Mm -hmm. As he was taking, he, he tried and what he called proved all of those remedies himself. Mm-hmm. So is the idea behind it is you uh, you give yourself a little dose, and then what happens is the body's immune system goes to work, building itself up against yeah. that? Is the, it's that simple? That's right. Wow. So hmm. it's that simple, it, and it does stimulate the immune system to, for that body to heal itself. It strengthens the immune system, so it's also preventative as well as curative. Uh, but the other thing is that, you know, people who have autoimmune issues, mm-hmm. uh, who have an overactive immune system, mm-hmm. it somehow calms the system if that's what's going on. It just brings what's out of balance into balance. Wow. I know you're in New Mexico, and I know... I mean, I just have a lot of respect for New Mexico. Of course, I lived there for 24 years, and I know people do things pretty differently there. So um, would you say there's quite a few um, practitioners of it around? I mean, do people really embrace this much? There, are, there aren't as many homeopaths, mm-hmm. actually. Um, homeopathy was at one time a big medicine in America. There were, there were homeopathic, homeopathic hospitals. Mm. Um, in the East that were primarily that, but they actually closed once the AMA was established. Uh-huh. And um, so it's, it's they're, not, they're not a lot of people doing it. It's much mm-hmm. more prevalent in Europe. Mm-hmm. And it's actually the, the national medicine of India. Oh, is it really? So all, all East Indian hospitals are homeopathic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's not that they don't do 
uh, conventional medicine there as well, but mm-hmm. their focus is homeopathic. Mm-hmm. So typically for yourself, what's sort of the profile or the kind of person that you usually end up seeing? Oh, God, it's a really broad range. Um, mm-hmm. I deal with a lot of children mm. uh, with behavioral issues. Really? Yeah. I deal with, yeah, um, I deal with people with, um, like I was mentioning, autoimmune issues. Mm-hmm. People who kind of have, just have a lot of depression. Mm. It is. It treats everything, mental, emotional, and physical, mm-hmm. all at the same time. Mm-hmm. And um, and there are two there are two ways to treat. Um, one is constitutionally, mm-hmm. and one is acutely. Mm-hmm. And acutely, we treat issues that come up like broken legs and uh, colds and flus and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But constitutionally, we're actually looking for um, a remedy that most closely matches that whole person. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll spend two hours with a person getting to know them as well as I can, mm-hmm. um, all aspects of themselves, their, their, um, their current issues, but also you know how they felt as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, how they reacted or responded to the difficult things in their lives because there's a pattern that shows up that helps me figure out what remedy would best fit their whole being. Interesting. And then, um, yeah, and then we treat them and it begins to bring everything into balance. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm I'm actually amazed. It's like I, I I have a lot of questions. It's like if I was to come to you and I was um, like depressed for whatever reason, you would you would con- you you would probably ask a whole lot of other questions in terms of trying to find out if this is maybe something that I've had to deal with my whole life. And then in terms of the the remedies themselves, um, I mean, I'm sure you have at your disposal, you know, a lot of understanding and things. But how do you determine? I mean, at a little more detailed level, and how many remedies do you have to work with? There are over three thousand remedies. Really, homeopathic remedies. So yeah, so it's uh, it's an adventure. <laughs> it's like being a detective, uh-huh. really. But um, there have been some some helpful tools that have been passed down by homeopaths. Um, one of my teachers is an East Indian uh, teacher who's been, he's kind of the cutting edge of homeopathy at this point, mm-hmm. who's really helped us uh, with tools to sort of narrow down people in categories mm-hmm. so that we can sort of begin to narrow down those thousands of remedies into a s- smaller groups that we pick from. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually put people in to figure out which kingdom people um, need a remedy from, whether it's it's plant, mineral, or animal. Those three three categories? Plant, mineral, and animal. Yes, those three categories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how, how and then do, there are yeah if I may how go do ahead. You, yeah plant mineral and animal so how how do those relate to certain let's just say conditions in other words do you, um yeah it, they actually wouldn't necessarily relate to a condition except for uh, how the person responds to the condition mm-hmm. so if a person having depression is really expressing a lot of anger, for one thing, and they're very aggressive, and they're very competitive. They're more likely to need a remedy from an animal source. If they're extremely oversensitive, um, they, uh, you know, can't uh, feel overwhelmed all the time, and they, they are more... Um, delicate in certain ways. They're more likely a plant. Hmm. And um, and they more likely need a mineral remedy if they're very organized and hmm. um, systematic and uh, things are black and white to them. Wow. It, and that's very... 
simplified version of, well, well, I'm of sure. how those can be used. When I was listening to you, I had this sense that it, it made sense. Um, yeah, good. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about uh, preventative because, you know, I mean, in our society, um, we're always, you know, chasing the problem well after the fact. I mean, we're talking surgery and drugs. If there wasn't a condition that you had to treat, how would you know how to be preventative? Or is, are there general treatments? Um, well, if, if there is like a flu going around, an acute issue, mm-hmm. um, there are, you know, like there actually is a, there are remedies in the stores that you can buy to prevent um, acute um, issues that you're trying to avoid, like um, oxalococcinum mm-hmm. is uh, one of the most common flu preventative remedies. Uh, it's really effective. Um, but when you treat somebody constitutionally, a, a remedy that you're going to take either daily or periodically, it's actually boosting your immune system constantly. So that you you are no longer susceptible to not only um, acute issues, not only that, but allergies, not only that, but uh, chronic disease. You're less susceptible. It's almost like you close this open window that you have mm-hmm. to disease, mm-hmm. um, and you just basically get constitutionally stronger. Mm-hmm. Do you actually? And and it and it is just. Just one remedy that you'll be picking, but it would be different from for everybody that came into your office. Uh-huh. Um, and you've got to find the unique remedy for that person. Mm-hmm. What, and what? sometimes you've got to. Uh, sometimes you have to to try a few different remedies before you sort of hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I was going to ask. That. Uh, but when they get it. When they get it, they kind of have this sense of well-being that they haven't had before, uh-huh. and um, and honestly, there aren't, there really aren't. I don't bump into people who don't have some kind of issue. <laughs> Everybody needs some kind of support in some area of their life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In terms of the cycle of the treatment, how you know what can someone can you know expect? I mean, is this something that happens over a couple of weeks, or it's ongoing, depending yeah. on the condition? Good question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's ongoing uh, for a while because um, you know, depending on actually, children cure very quickly mm-hmm. because they don't have a long history of patterns that have set in. Mm-hmm. Um, but adults, you know, they come in at 40 years of age, and they've had 40 years of of becoming who they are right now. Mm-hmm. And um, there is an unwinding that needs to happen uh, that happens with these remedies, and so it's not going to be something that changes instantly. Mm-hmm. You'll you'll be noticing quickly a shift in your energy and your sleep patterns and and your your just your again your sense of well-being mm-hmm. um, or s- particular symptoms um, easing up, mm-hmm. um, but it's something that usually will take uh, months to a year to two years, and some people like this so much that they'll actually take it longer, oh. and then at some point you'll feel like you don't need it anymore, mm-hmm. and you stop taking it, but you, you can use it down the, kind of the rest of your life. If you found a remedy that's really supportive, um, you use it at stressful times mm-hmm. or you use it, you know, we, we are constantly aging mm-hmm. and we have, um, we live in a toxic world, Very. Uh, so we're challenged constantly. So it's something that you can use down the road when you feel like you need a boost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This sounds like something that would be good for a whole lot of people, um, almost thought of as a supplement. In other words, you know. That's right. Yeah. People, I mean, people around here spend a lot of money on supplements. And it's. That's right. And I'm not so sure all, most of those supplements are really all that good for you. 
just in my studies? Right, and some of them are useful, and too many of them homeopathy sees as being too taxing for the body to have to deal with. Yeah, too much, too fast. um, Yeah. Yeah. So a constitutional remedy actually really helps to eliminate the need for a lot of that. Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's interesting. So, you know, I didn't ask this at the top, but probably should have. So there are these little white beads, right? Yes. So they, well, that's kind of how they're produced by the pharmacies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Someone told me you're not supposed to touch them. You're not supposed to, you know. Right. Yeah, you're actually, when you get them, you're supposed to just pour them under your tongue. Uh-huh. Uh, because you might have something on your fingers uh, that would interfere mm-hmm. with the strength of the remedy. Mm-hmm. So there are some some things that, that the remedies are sort of universally sensitive to, mm-hmm. um, like coffee, mm-hmm. like um, camphor. Mm-hmm. Uh, some, some remedies are sensitive to mint, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So you just have to have an awareness mm-hmm. of that and... Uh, the pills are actually just, they're just uh, little lactose pills, mm-hmm. little milk sugar pills. Mm-hmm. But the, the remedies have been um, immersed into these pills. So could you give me one or two cases, of course, without you know, using any names, of um, maybe a case that um, you found most interesting or... You know, some somebody that actually responded really well, or maybe even somebody that initially didn't respond very well, and you had to work hard to find out what actually would might have worked with them. Sure, <laughs> challenged um, you, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'll give you a couple of my favorite cases. Very good. Um, I had a little girl here who was three, brought in. Um, Basically, had a normal birth, came in, everything was normal about her. Her, her. her development skills were normal. She was talking just fine for a three-year-old. Mm-hmm. Um, she got a uh, vaccine, which was a cocktail of seven different vaccines, mm. and she stopped talking. Really? In fact, she she could only open her mouth, stick out her tongue, and... Um, and make gargling sounds, but she could not speak anymore. Hmm. And obviously the parents were quite freaked out. And uh, we, over a period of uh, six months, began to give her homeopathic versions of each of those vaccines. Hmm. And with each vaccine, as we backed this out, she came back. Hmm she began to speak again. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of a one of my favorite mm-hmm. cases, and she's perfectly normal now. Mm-hmm. Another case was a, a little girl who was nine. She was kicked in the head by a horse. She was up in Montana in a horse show and airlifted to a special hospital in Washington State, mm-hmm. uh, where she was put into an induced coma. They did brain surgery, all of that. But we started her out on day one with um, high-potency arnica mm-hmm. and followed up with a surgery protocol that I used to help with all of that. Mm-hmm. And when they went to bring her out of coma, they were going. she was in a morphine-induced coma, they were going to have to get put her on methadone over a period of time to bring her out. And I actually used a homeopathic remedy instead. And the hospital allowed me to coordinate with them in her total care. Nice. She's been tested recently and has had, even though she had to have a metal plate in her head, mm-hmm. she's had no cognitive problems since then and test normal. Very nice. Yeah. So that was a really satisfactory case. Very, very nice. Have you had any experience with autism? I have. I've had quite a bit. 
with autism. Um, one little girl who her autism was so severe, basically she would have people would call would label her as um, mentally disabled. The only verbal skills she had was to parrot anything anybody said. Hmm. She had very uh, sort of OCD gesturing that she would do uh, that was constant, where she would pick at herself. And I treated her. I also actually treated her with various remedies. Um, and over time, she was able to actually speak in full sentences. Mm. Um, she actually could look me in the eye. She could actually have contact eye contact with people and communicate with them. So That's got to be incredibly uh, rewarding for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, the reason I ask about autism is because I, I was working for a nutritional company down here for 10 months and uh, became friends with Eric Weber, who's uh, he's um, autistic, and with the help of a friend when he was really, really young, sort of came out of it. And he just graduated with a law degree. And he is the um, Southern California global messenger for the Special Olympics down there. So I've gotten... Oh, wonderful. Yeah, Eric's amazing. I mean, it's like you think you're having a bad day just to go to one of his events, you know, for the Special Olympics. And it's just like, you know, it's incredibly up. Yeah, fantastic. And he is... I in, bet. He's so loving. I mean, it's just amazing. So... I you know I, I look at autism and other things like that as maybe possible gifts. Eric certainly has taught me a lot, and um, he was able to he was able to come out of his particular condition mainly through just so many people encouraging him. And then he ran. He's got like ninety gold medals right now for the Special Olympics. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I love that story. Yeah, I'll, I'll, if That's I remember, wonderful. I'll send you a link to his website. He's got a YouTube channel yeah. and everything else. It's just, you know, it's just so uplifting to me to, you know, be involved in the community of people that by many people's standards have less than what we have. But um, we, we don't really have any right to judge that, you know. I've learned a lot. That's right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So I that, love hearing that. Yeah, so that being said, um, I'm just sort of curious about the um, how you got involved, because I, I also know you work with Jake in rheology. And for people that are interested, That's right. in, interested in that, then go to rheology.org. How did you, you know, do you work them both together, or how do, how do they work together for you? Or do you work them separately? Well, they work, I work them separately, though, often... Um, my patients are also involved in rheology oh, really? and vice versa. So, nice. yeah. And um, actually, Jake, my husband Jake is a psychotherapist, and we often share patients as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there is, once people get to know us from, from whichever end, mm -hmm. uh, they often become involved in the rest of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And what we do together are personal growth courses where we teach people how to be happy, how to create lives that they love, and um, how to relate mm -hmm. with others in a way that is far more peaceful. Mm -hmm. uh, we teach them how to communicate better, how to speak in ways that they're taking responsibility for the reality that they're creating. Mm -hmm. That probably... Um, we've done that for... Yeah, you've done that for what? Sorry. We've done that for uh, about, I don't know, 13, 14 years, something oh, like that. It's really, really nice. Well, I could see where they would yeah. um, work together because, I mean, there's the physical, there's the spiritual, mental, emotional. That's right. And yeah, I mean, they're all related. I mean, at least that's been my experience. Well, they are. You know, we, we too often... You know, learn how to meditate, but we don't learn how to get along with people. <laughs> or, uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but it's really, really true. I, you know, I experience that yeah. uh, almost daily. It's really, really interesting. You That's mentioned. right. Yeah. And you know, none of us were taught 
how to how to have a healthy relationship mm-hmm. for the most part. Mm-hmm. Some people were lucky enough to have a good example set by their parents, but I mm-hmm. think most of us weren't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, so it's, it, it, they were missing some tools, and actually, rheology really provides them. Uh huh. Of the tool sets that you you teach, because I know there's the course you offer on. Um, Dating, relating, and mating, which I have yet to take and want to. But there's also mm-hmm. many other things. You just recently did a webinar. And what was the title of that one? That was called Making Love Easy. Yes. Love it. So yeah. what's your favorite part of all that? I mean, do you have something that you really enjoy or one aspect of it? Well, actually, my favorite part is the... Uh, the workshops that we teach, we, we take people on retreat for six to eight days. Mm-hmm. And I watch people come in and wake up to their lives in mm-hmm. ways that they never have before. That's my, the most exciting part for me. And I see people do this with their remedies as well. Mm-hmm. But there's something about immersing yourself for a week in a retreat with a group of people that are doing the same thing mm-hmm. that makes people come alive. That's my favorite part, and it's to see safe. that happen. It's safe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, you know, wake up is just the great word. I, I, I love it, you know, because in so much of all, everything that's going on right now, you know, people are waking up. And uh, That's right. Doing various different things. They know something's not right. So more and more people, I think, are, are looking for something that um, – can help them wake up and change their lives. So I, I really commend what you guys are doing, everything you're doing. It's really, really nice. Thank you. Yeah. And back and back to homeopathy. Yeah. Um, I, I think I'd like to share a little bit of why I, how I found it and why I, uh, how I even got there. I'm really glad you um, Yeah. But I was, as you said, a massage therapist. Mm-hmm. Um, and I became an artist after that and uh, was involved in that for quite a while. Uh, but I had a health issue. I had something, an autoimmune issue called Raynaud's syndrome. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went to a homeopath for help with that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's where your, your peripheral vessels shut down when you get cold. Mm-hmm. Um, your fingers and toes turn white. Uh, lose all their circulation, and it's kind of a the, the immune system overreacting when you get cold by taking all of your circulation to your core. Hmm. And um, so I went to this homeopath, and not only did I have that cured, uh, but I also uh, got over my fear of... Um, Public speaking, oh, really? which I know is a huge uh, factor for most people. So I saw the connection, you know, how this one remedy could fix my Raynaud's and also uh, bring me back a, a, a certain self confidence. Uh, I never would have been able to lead retreats mm-hmm. having not done this work. Do you understand the relationship? And I'm still... Yeah, go ahead. Um, the relationship, uh, gosh, well, in a way, there's kind of the Raynaud's, that way of withdrawing is a metaphor oh, yeah. for how I did myself mm-hmm. when I was out in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still an introvert, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm, much more, I'm much more at ease being myself out in the world. So let me uh, let me ask you a question. We'd like to ask everybody: Is that I ask it a little differently than Lisa? But um, if if there was like one or two, let's just say one thing that you think people need to hear for their health and well being, as a, like maybe a health tip, what would that be? I do a lot of dietary counseling. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's finding out what you can eat. Focusing on food being your um, fuel mm-hmm. and um, 
really uh, cleaning that up. Mm -hmm. I think, that, and what I find is, is with homeopathy, is people stop stop craving the foods that they shouldn't be eating. Hmm. Once they have that kind of support, and we all, they, you know, what we should be eating is obviously we should be avoiding sugar and some of us gluten and mm -hmm. some of us um, nightshades. Uh, but it is an individual thing. It's it's about finding out what what works best for your system, mm -hmm. and then really committing to that. Hmm. So that would be, I think, and and of course, moving. Keep yourself moving, exercising. Mm -hmm. That's a huge piece as well. Yeah, my exercise routine is walking hard as I can for uh, not hard as I can, but about up to about an hour a day, something like that. That's perfect. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and that gets us out in the fresh air, and mm -hmm. uh, also helps us mentally and emotionally mm -hmm. to kind of get out out of our heads and out into nature and uh, yeah, yeah all nice. of that that's really really nice so I'm imagining you could probably work with people from just about anywhere in the world right because most of what you're doing is consulting because they get these remedies locally is that true I work with people all over the world I have patients in Japan and Europe mm -hmm. and Canada mm -hmm. and all over the United States. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, Skype allowed me to do that because yeah. I need to see people. Yes. It um, doesn't work just to talk on the phone. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's really opened up my world a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to know you're using Skype because maybe if we do something in the future, we can do that too. Yeah. Right. So um, we usually do like show notes, so I can certainly drop your email address in. What about the phone number? Should I include that? Oh, yes. That'd okay. be great. And do you have a uh, website? Sounds like you don't, do you? Pardon? Do, do you have a website? Do I have? Um, well, just the Rheology website. Good. Rheology. Actually, so that's org. Yes. Nice. Okay. Is there anything else that you wanted to include? Anything else you wanted to say? Um, I think that's I think that's plenty for today. <laughs> and Good. thank you for the opportunity. And it's so nice to do this. I I you know when I found out you were doing this and I realized that we hadn't really done a show on it, I thought Hannah's the perfect person. So it's, yeah, it's so nice to reconnect too. Thank you, John. And I know yeah, in, in real, rheology, uh, no praise and no blame, but I think you're awesome. Sorry, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Tom. All right, great. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for uh, being here. And if Hannah's up for it, we'll probably do a blab in maybe two weeks. Um, probably pretty short, but it'll give all of you out there time to sort of listen to this and, and decide if you'd like to join us for some questions and answers with Hannah. So just go to Alternative Health Tools, and if you go to the About page, you'll get an idea of what we're up to because we're changing the format a little bit. And then go to the contact page and just let us know. You can, If you don't uh, want to do the blab, you can certainly ask questions, and I'll pass it on to Hannah, and uh, we'll all be good. So, Hannah, again, thanks for being here. Oh, thank you, John. All right. Good. It was really fun. Yeah, good. I'm glad you had okay. fun. I did, too. So, yeah, I did. So we'll see you next time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.